do you do you remember what it was like coming up like in the, in the late 80s like when did like the whole crack epidemic hit richmond and what was that like okay uh the crack epidemic hit richmond like back in 1980s i want to say 86 i want i want to say 86 was when the crack epidemic hit and i wasn't a part of it i wasn't a part of it when it first hit you know i i i i, I was working hard you know i'm a professional cook and i was working hard i was working at at uh a place called the Chef's Restaurant. And uh, I started out as a matter of fact, I got in trouble. I got in trouble. I was breaking in cars, stealing CBs. You know what a CB is? Yeah, yeah. I was stealing CBs and stealing Kenwood uh, cassette decks and everything. And that was the thing back then, CBs and cassette decks. And I was stealing them and I was carrying them back to school. I was in high school, I was carrying them back to school. And you wouldn't believe the teachers was actually buying them. The teachers was actually buying them. They was buying the Kenwood speakers and the and the Kenwood um, um, cassette decks and whatnot. They was buying that stuff and I was stealing that stuff, breaking in people's cars and selling them to the teachers and whatnot, man. And I mean, it kept a little money in my pocket because I was a weed head then. You know, I wasn't doing no crack or nothing then, man. I was, I was smoking my little weed, man, and, and going to little parties and everything, yeah. man. You could go to a party back then, man. And I mean, slow dancing and, and all of this stuff right here, man, yeah. was the thing, man. To have a little fun, to, to go downtown to 707 or the finest men's shop and buy your little clothes and everything and go back and and, and, and go to the clubs and everything and go to the little parties and get the girls. I had plenty of girls. Nah. Oh, and I don't say I'm a very attractive dude, man, but my swag was on 1,000 yeah. back then, boy. You know, I kept my clothes nice and tight and everything, man. And oh, kept my little yeah. stuff pressed. You know, mama taught me how to iron. She taught me how to cook. She taught me how to clean and everything, you know, so I ain't need a woman for nothing but one thing. You were shot. <laughs> yeah, boy. And you know, um, I, I, I buy my clothes and everything, but um, like I was saying, you know, I was breaking the cars and, 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 and taking CVs and taking um, stereo systems and all the cars and everything and going back and selling them to buy my weed and to buy my clothes and everything. And I got in trouble uh, down by the college I can still remember what the show was. It was the Commodores. And uh, I went down there and I was taking the CBs and the, and the cassette decks and I had another little friend with me and he got caught. I didn't get caught, he got caught. But by him getting caught, they, the police scared him so bad until he told on me. And when he told on me, you know, I got in trouble and everything. That was my first encounter actually really with the police. But by me not being 18 yet, you know, they didn't really do nothing real serious. They put me on probation and everything and told me if I got in any more trouble that uh, I, would, I, would, I would catch that time, that them, them six months that I had on my head behind that little incident, you know, that I got caught down by the Coliseum, you know, with. But uh, I didn't, um, for a while I had stopped that because, I mean, it scared me. It scared me pretty good, so I didn't uh, take that. I didn't. I didn't take none of that. I didn't do that anymore. I said maybe about maybe two or three years. I I picked it back up again and started doing it again. But then after that, right there, I got a real job. But like I said, when I got in that trouble, my dad said, "Hey, you made your bed hard. You mm -hmm. don't sleep in it." So he said, "Well, uh, get you a lawyer." And uh, you get you a job and I'm gonna pay for half and you pay for the other half. So I, I went, got a little job. A friend of mine helped me get a little job working at a restaurant. It was called the Chef's Restaurant. Okay. That was down on, uh, I think it was 12th and Main. It was down on 12th and Main. It's a florist and a little restaurant down there and there in that building. And I got a little job down there as a dishwasher. And I like working in that kitchen so much, man. And I, and I, I like, the atmosphere and everything, cooking, and, and, but I wasn't a cook yet. I was a, I was a dishwasher. But so then the, uh, the, the sandwich and the salad guy uh, found another job. And the boss asked me, did I want to do that? Did I want to take his position? Yeah. So I told him, uh, I said, yeah. 
I said, I love to do that right there. I said, I've been watching uh, James over there, uh, what he does. And she said, well, you think you can handle it? And I'm going like, yes, ma'am. I, I matter of fact, I know I can handle it. So she said, well, we're going to try you out for a couple of days and, and, and see can you handle it, you know. She said, we're not going to put you on a fast pace. We're going to put you on the um, on lunch. She said, because the lunch is like a little, just a little slower. Yeah. She said, so we're going to see how you progress in that right there. So when they put me in that spot right there, man, I did so well. We're going to put said, you well, on, on in, that pos in that position right there permanent. So they put me in that position, in that position permanent. So I did breakfast, I did lunch, and I did dinner, and I, I was so good, man. And I, I was not only was I doing, I was watching the cook back there behind me too. I was watching them too in case a position came up in his spot. So uh, I got good at it, and I became so good, and I started creating my own. You know how how, how you um, what are you looking for? How you fix your plate up? You know presentation. Yeah. Presentation. I started fixing, fixing, fixing plates up and, and making and, them look yeah, not decorated. Right, and designing my my plates and everything to to to, to myself, and it looked so good until uh, up um, Richmond Times Dispatch, which they don't uh, they don't have a Richmond Times Dispatch, is it? No, R News Leader, Richmond News Leader it was News Leader, and it was Times Dispatch. News Leader was the evening, Times Dispatch was the morning. Okay. Did you know that? I did not. Okay. Richmond News Leader was the evening. Richmond Times Dispatch was the morning. You had a morning paper and you had an evening paper. I didn't know that. Okay. So, um, Richmond um, Times Dispatch, Richmond News Leader came in and uh, they said, who is the guy that's, that's designing y'all plates and stuff like this right here? And so my boss pulled, pulled me out and, and said, this is Willie right here. So they pulled me out and, 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 and uh, presented me to them and they did a little article on me. I don't know if I could find the article. I wish I could find out. It may be in one of my mother's uh, picture albums. What year was it? That was in 19, I want to say, I want to say 1989 or 1990. I might can find it. 1980 or 1990. It was an article in there on me and everything. News leader. News leader. Which means I. Right. And uh, and they did a nice little, little article on me and everything, and, and man, you wouldn't believe when they put that article in the paper how how business picked up. Wow. Business picked up because they wanted to see who was this guy that they was writing about that was creating creating these these masterpiece plates. Yeah, which was me, and uh, I became so good, man. Until people would call me out to their table because they wanted to meet me, you know, yeah. they wanted to see who, who this guy is. And I was young too, man. I was young, so they, they would call me out to their table. And a lot of times when they called me out to their table, they would they would give me a tip. And and you know, back then you had to split your tips with the waitresses. Yeah. But uh, in my in my case, they told me I could have all of mine because the, even the waitresses and the waiters was getting nice tips yeah. behind what, what I was doing. Um, and they, was, they was getting um, nice little jumps. So I say about maybe two, two or three years later, she really wanted to keep me right there where I was at mm -hmm. because I was doing so well right there with the desserts and with the sandwiches and with stuff like that. Yeah. She wanted to keep me right there. But the, the other cook, now he, which his name was Jesse, and Jesse and, and John Page yeah. was my mentors when it came down to cooking. They were my mentors. Jesse, Jesse Robinson and John Page. I give them their credit because they were the ones who actually taught me how to cook. Yeah. They, they really taught me how to cook and they, they took me under their wing and everything and I became so good. And then Jesse got a job moving, got a job working at the Marriott. The Marriott hadn't too long been built. And Jesse was an executive chef because the Hoppers sent Jesse to school. Oh, snap. They sent Jesse to school to become an executive chef because in order to be an executive chef, you have you have to have a year of college. That's for the management, the business and management part. Yeah. You know, that's the only part that I don't have. That's why I'm what you call a first cook. I'm not an executive chef. I'm a first cook. First cook can do everything that an executive chef can do. He just don't have the business and management part. I see what and you're I don't saying. have the business and management part. Uh, but I'm more than sure if I went back to school now to get that business and management part, I would become an executive chef, which it don't matter to me, you know, <clears throat> because I can expedite. 
I can I can do everything an executive chef can do. You can Expedite, run the kitchen. Run the whole I can run the whole kitchen and keep the, the, the food costs down and everything. See that's what a, that's what an executive chef does. He keeps the food costs down. Yeah. And but he also gets the finest food, the finest meats and the finest um 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 vegetables and everything that that you can get. That's what an executive chef does. You know, he go out and he buy his own food and his own stuff to cook with and everything, you know. That's what an executive chef does, you know. But I'm not an executive chef. I'm a what you call a first cook. And a first cook is right up under an executive chef. Um, but, man, like I said, I, I love cooking. You know, I love cooking, man. It's my passion. To see the smiles on people's face, to watch them enjoy eating your meal, that's, that's what it's all about, man. You know, that's why I love cooking. I love to see people happy. No matter what goes on in life, you're going to always eat. True you know, it could be a time where uh, someone dies. You go out and you eat. You know, someone gets married. You go out and you eat. After church. Yeah, after yeah. church. You eat. You know, everything is all about eating and, and enjoying yourself. So that's why I love cooking so much, just to see the expressions on people's faces and everything.